Hello everybody and welcome back. Last time we fought against Koji and we also uncovered the identity of the tickling culprit, I guess. This time we're going to head back to Erika and give her back the skirt. But before we do that, there's actually one more thing to do in the abandoned warehouse. Because if we inspect one of these boxes, I believe this one, or not. Let's see, was this one was it? Here we go, we got a tortoise medal. So I'm not going to give this one a name. But yeah, if we inspect the warehouse you can get a medal and there's actually a different medal depending on which version you're playing. So first off, let's go with the tortoise medal for the Kabuto, for the Merabi version. So from this point on, whenever we encounter any new medal, since the level will be dependent on yours, it most likely will be different, so instead of giving a solid number, I would say whether they have a high, mid or low value, or zero, for any attributes. And also, since a few of these medals I will not be using, meaning that I will not be leveling them up and unlocking all of the metaforces, I will just tell you all three metaforces straight away. Okay? So, first off we have the Turtles medal. It has affinity for the optic skill, meaning that it is a fairly useful medal for, let's say, totalizer and it will aim for defend parts, and it has a compatibility of plus 7. As for its attributes, it has l high values in both shoot and aim shot, low values in strike and heal, and zero in berserk defend support and interrupt. As for its first metaphors, it is called optic form. It targets the user, it requires a half a gauge, and it has the shoot attribute, and it will turn all meta part skills into optic, therefore dou doubling their damage. And one more thing to say. So you may be looking at that 40 out of 80 and think, wow, I only have to charge once and then I can use it. Unfortunately, that is not quite the case. For whatever reason, even if your metaphors skill requires less than a full gauge, you still need to have a full gauge before you can perform it. I don't know why, and yes, it is rather annoying. Anyways, on to the next one. Absorb Optic. It also targets the user. It requires 70 metaphors, is attribute its aim shot and it makes it so all optic attacks received are absorbed, therefore healing you. A fairly useful ability. And finally we have Status Restore. This one actually targets all yourself and all your allies. It requires half a metaphors gauge and the attribute is heal. And it will remove all status ailments from allies and the user. Whether these are good or bad, so do keep that in mind. Anyways, switching on to the uh, Rokusho version. The medal that we would obtain here is the Snake Medal. Its attribute or affinity for is movement and it will aim also for defend parts and it has the same compatibility bonus. As for its attributes, it will have high values in strike and berserk, mid values in heal, low values in defend and support and then zero values in shoot, aim shot and interrupt. As for its first metaphors, it is called movement. It targets all enemies, it requires 50 out of 80 of a metaphors gauge, and its attribute is Strike, and it will inflict the virus bug status on all enemies. So we still haven't seen this particular status ailment, I will just say that all it does is reduce the enemy rate of success and evasion, so it can be quite deadly. And also, whenever you use a specific metaphors to inflict a status ailment, it will stay for quite a long time, so don't worry about it just disappearing in like half a second. However, enemies such as Tankar, or any enemy with the stability skill, is completely immune even if you try to use a metaphors on it, meaning that movement is pretty much pointless on Tankar. Up, up next, we have Cancel Movement. It targets the user as well as all allies, it requires 60 metaphors and it has the Berserk attribute, and it prevents all allies from being inflicted by the bug virus ailment. And then finally, we have Unbreakable Will. It targets one enemy, it requires 50 out of 80 metaphors, and it has the heal attribute. And it will deal damage based on the number of destroyed ally parts. So pretty much if a bunch of, of your allies have taken damage, it will deal a substantial amount of damage. And I do believe that it has chain reaction damage. But yeah, that's it for the medals here. Let's actually head back to the school. Actually, no, sorry, we have to go back to Erika's house first. Oh, Iki, 
What took you so long? I thought I should give this back, and besides, I really need my pants back. It's okay, go ahead and change. After all, the incident is over, right? I'll give you the skirt back. I don't want it. Not like I'm gonna be wearing it again. Uh, hey, you can't do that to me. I have no reason to keep this either. Well, anyway. The members of the Select Corps were pretty cool, weren't they? They just showed up and gave the Robo Gang what was coming to them. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I saw it all myself. They were taking the Rob Robo away somewhere. What were you doing while the Select Corps was busy, busy, was busy beating the Rob Robos? Well, I, uh, that is... Man, you, you just can't be dependent on, can you? I gotta go back and start writing up the school's paper headline. You can come too if you want, but stay out of my way, okay? Maybe I should go to school too? Alright. So, I don't know why, but we do still have the skirt. And also the Robo Robo medal, I forgot to mention it. As it says there, why is it that if I use this I can run away from a fight? So it's pretty much it pretty much works, I believe, like a smoke screen. You can use it to run away from combat, but of course you will consume it. But don't worry, we will be getting more of those later. So let's quickly head for our classroom. Here we are. I'm trying to write an article, so stay out of my way! Is what I want to say. But there is much bigger news on the horizon. I heard a ghost is appearing at Mount Odoro, north of town. If I'm lucky, I can get its picture! Yeah. So, that's pretty much telling us to leave. Everyone, listen to me! Isn't that Spike's voice? Now what are they up to? In the school, we have had many kids who lost their metabots and metaparts to a ghost at Mount Otoro. The Select Corps ignores us, cause we're just kids and won't help us out. So we have to take matters into our own hands. The time has come for us to take our stuff back from the ghost. What? You don't want to get your stuff back? You're gonna fight with a ghost? Just how do you plan on fighting? My mom, my mom always told me to stay away from Mount Odoro. Losing our meta parts is bad, but going to the mountain is worse. How pitiful are you guys? Oh, just give up, Spike. No matter what you say, they won't understand. Oh, okay, boss. Are you listening? We'll be the only ones going to Mount Odoro. But you do realize that we'll be taking all the meta parts that we get our hands on. Including all of yours, got it? Wow, boss, you really said that well. Haha, <laughs> now we can take as many meta parts as we want. Nothing from you, Sloan? Alright. Iki, we're going too! I figured I have to go. We're not gonna lose to the screws. That ghost is definitely gonna, gonna get caught on, caught on film. Uh, okay. Alright then, it's settled. I'll meet you at the entrance to Mount Odoro. Try not to get lost, okay? And we got a town map. Erika is as forceful as ever. For now, I'll just go back home and prepare for a picnic. If I, tell mom, if I tell mom that I'm going to Mount Odoro, I wonder what she'll say. Hmm... Alright, so we're about to leave the school and we really have no reason to come back until much, much later on. So I might as well go over that elusive third random metabot that we never run into. So, Crozer Dog. <clears throat> sorry, Crozer Dog. It is pretty much a two-legged long-range metabot. If you really liked Cyan Dog and you want a metabot that is almost identical to it, really, then there you have it. Not much else to say about him, really. 
Though I did run into him while I was doing some leveling up, so I did got a meta part, but of course I wasn't recording that, so... I figured I would go over that now. Anyway, let's head back home. How was school, Iki? Want something to eat? Um, I'm going out. Could you make a lunch? Where are you going? Um, a picnic with Erica. Really? You and Erica on a picnic? N no, um, uh, just forget what I said. Iggy? I should just give up on lunch. But I should still at least bring something else with me. So, we have to inspect a book, the bookcase here. And we take our pen light. And let's leave. Hey Iggy, look, Mom made your lunch for you. Thanks for bringing it to me, Dad. We got a lunchbox. I got a present for you from Daddy. Holy Mirarolli, a brand new Timpet. And we got a male Timpet, so we still can't do anything about any female meta parts. Take care of yourself, son. Try not to make your mother worry. Okay, thanks a lot, Dad. Okay. Off to Mount Odoro. Alright, so we got our second team pet. So before I actually build any new metabot, let's do some exploration around town. We, got, we have been neglecting the town a bit. So yeah, as we said previously, this is Erika's house. So the three houses here, they belong to the screws. We're not going to go in right now. And this house, well, let's just ignore it for now. But let's quickly go to the Hop Mart, because we can actually buy a few things. But you may notice that we don't really have that much that much money. So at this point in the game, the only real way to make money is by selling any meta parts that we may have obtained. But before I sell any, we have a few parts that we can buy. And these belong to two different sets, which I will go over right now. First off, we have Jorat. So this is pretty much a meta bot that only serves one specific function. It can use Scout. Its head, as well as both arms, do use Scout. It has float legs, meaning that it will have a decent speed on all fields, but it will never be quite fast, particularly fast in any. Duke, you may want to end up buying the full set, but I'll explain that later. As for the other one, Noctobat. And this is a bit more interesting. So. Its head, as well as both arms, have the same skill, anti-air, which severely damages air metabots. Do not be fooled by the 8, 3 and 5 power value in all three parts, because that is quite mi misleading. If you happen to hit any enemy that falls under the air metabot category, then you can quite easily take out at least two parts in, what, in a single hit, and it, they all have chain damage, so keep that in mind. And yeah, it is also a new type of legs, air. They, they do better when fighting in wilderness and desert fields. So yeah, you may also want to consider buying not too bad parts, but for now... Actually, I might just do that. Though I do have to sell a couple of parts, let's see. So we have four, we have five sumo presses, so I think we can depart with a few. Let's see if we have any spares for anything else. We have a spare light axe. Anything on the left arms? Yes, we do. I think that's actually more than enough. So let's buy a full set for Noctobat. There we go, and we might as well build our metabot. Here we have the naked timpet. So you can just use the cursor and select parts. In this case, since usually if you have all parts for a set, all you have to do is just press start on any of them, and the the metabot will be automatically arranged. For example, so we have the full set for 
Not too bad, but I, not for any of the other three. But if you just press start here, it automatically gives us the full set. So we could equip it with either the tortoise. So, no, only the tortoise. I forgot that we don't get the snake one in this one. But for now, I'm not going to give it any metal, and you'll see why. Before we head north to Mount Odoro, let's quickly visit Miss Nye. Good afternoon, Miss Nye. Good afternoon, Iki. Check out my cool new meta watch. Well then, I'll just have to give you a present to congratulate you on your new meta bot. Please go into the next room. Please go into the room next door and select one medal of your choice. Are you sure it's okay? Yay! Thank you very much. So yeah, you could have done this pretty much as soon as you got your meta watch, but there wasn't much of a point since we didn't have a second team. Bet. And yeah, here we have a total of six medals. At different points in the story, if you talk to Nai, she will give you an yet another chance to pick another medal. And if you do it correctly, you can end up getting all six. For now, I'm going to go over all of them, starting with the ones that you absolutely do not want or need right now. So, first off, we have the Monkey Medal. It has affinity for the Interrupt skill, not the Attribute. And it will aim for support parts, and it has a compatibility bonus of plus 8. As for its attributes, it has high values in interrupt and then low values in strike and shoot and then zero in everything else. As for its mana forces, the first one is called Chaos. It targets all enemies and it requires 50 mana force and it has of course the interrupt attribute. It inflicts Chaos, which is this game's version of confusion, on all enemies, making them incapable of choosing their own actions and they may occasionally t attack their own allies. Up next, we have Useless. It is. It also targets all enemies. It requires 50, again, it has the same attribute, and it will disable a random part on all enemies, make, meaning that they cannot use that part at all. And finally we have Cancel Flow. It targets all allies and the user itself, it requires 60 metaphors and it has the Berserk attribute, and it, will, it prevents all allies from being affected by the Flow status. Again, we haven't really seen the Flow status, but think of it as Poison or Burn damage. All right. So, the metaphors themselves, they're not bad, so why do I say that this is useless at this point? For the next area, there is not a single enemy or metabot that has an interrupt part that will be benefited at all by the metal itself. What do I mean by this? There are a few enemies that do have interrupt parts, and they technically get the compatibility bonus, but these parts themselves don't have any function besides giving a passive boost from equipping them. Meaning that you will not be able to obtain any parts that allow you to like inflict confusion or anything else on a specific metabot. Of course you can still work around with it. If you train, if you use interrupt or if you grind on strike and shoot, you can do something with this metal, but right now I would say skip it. Up next, yet another metal that I would say you should rather skip. We have the chameleon metal. Its attribute or affinity is Conceal. It will aim for heal parts and it has a compatibility bonus of 7. It has high values in Berserk and Support, low values in Shoot and then 0 in everything else. As for its meta forces, first off we have Hide and Seek. It, this is a bit of a weird one because it pretty much targets everybody. It requires 30 out of 80 meta force and it is of the attribute of the support attribute. It reduces all enemy evasion while simultaneously increasing it for all allies, so a pretty handful ability. Up next, we have Remoteness Up. It targets all allies as well as the user. It requires half a Metaforce gauge and it is of the support attribute, and it will re increase the remoteness for all allies' leg parts. And then finally, we have Damage Ball. This is quite an, quite an interesting one, really. It only targets one enemy, and it has chain damage. It requires 60 metaphors and it is of the shoot attribute. It deals chain damage on an enemy and damage is equal to the amount of damage taken by the user. So the more beat up you are, the more damage you dish out. So why do I say don't go for this one? Pretty much the same issues that the monkey metal. Not a single enemy, and in this case I literally mean not a single enemy in the next area has any concealed parts. So you will not be getting any compatibility uh, bonus from them. Of course, the attributes themselves are not, are not bad, high berserk and high support is something that you can work with, but I would say skip it anyways. 
Up next, this is a metal that you, you maybe can do something about it in this next area. We have the Rabbit Metal. Its affinity is for the time skill. It aims for defend parts and it has a compatibility of plus 7. As for its attributes, it has high shoot and support, low berserk and then zero in everything else. As for metaphors, the first one is called Charge. It targets all ally eh, sorry, all enemies, it requires half a metaphors gauge and it is of the support attribute. And it increases all enemies charge value, meaning that they w move slower, making the charge phase even slower. It doesn't affect the radiation, keep that in mind. Up next, we have the pushover attack. This also targets all enemies. It requires 60 and it is F the support attribute. This is a bit of a weird one. So if this um, takes action, if this affects any enemy that is currently during the charge phase, it will make it so once they reach the center of the stage, whatever action that we're going to perform is cancelled. And they also take minor damage. So they, it pretty much wait, wastes, wastes, yeah, it pretty much makes the enemy's turn useless. And then we have Cancel Bind. It targets all allies as well as the user and requires 60 metaphors and it is of the Berserk attribute. And it prevents all allies from being affected by the bind status. We haven't talked about this really, but it pretty much slows you down. Alright, on to the final three medals that you may want to use. Or that you, I do recommend that you think about using in this next area. First off, we have the mouse metal. Actually, sorry, I want to quickly go back to the rabbit one. So, if you're playing the Rokusho version and you got tension up from War Bandit, you may want to consider using it because it will get a compatibility bonus and you may be able to work around, do something with it. And there's also a few other parts in the next area that do have the time skill, but similar to what I said about the previous interrupt parts. They simply provide a passive bonus, meaning that they don't have any specific action that they can perform. Perform, Therefore, they are not really benefited from getting compatibility bonuses. Oh, anyways, back to the mouse metal. Its attribute is Scout, or Affinity, and it aims for interrupt parts, and it has a compatibility of plus 6. As for its attributes, it has high aim shot and support, low strike and then zero in everything else. As for its metaphors, the first one is called Spy Game. It requires 30 out of 80 metaphors and its, sub uh, and its attribute is Support. It reduces the rate of success of all enemies and increases it for all allies. So a, hand a handy ability. Up next we have Proximity Up. It requires half a metaphors gauge. It is of the Support attribute and it increases proximity for all allies' leg parts. And then finally we have Structureless. It targets all enemies, it requires 70 out of 80 metaphors, and it is of the aim shot attribute. It destroys one defense part of every enemy if they happen to have one, so it is rather specific. So yeah, you can work, this is one that I, I would say if you want to you can use it. As we saw in the Hop Mart, you can buy Jorad, the Jorad set, so all parts will get a compatibility bonus, but even then I would say only buy either the only buy for sure the head and if you want the legs, because having a metabot that only uses scout is a bit of a waste, I would say. Maybe try to equip some other ability or skill on the arms. But yeah, the mouse metal is fine. Up next, we have the bat metal. Its attribute is anti-air and it aims for berserk parts and it has a compatibility of plus 7. It starts with mid values in both strike and shoot and low values in support and interrupt, and it has zero in berserk, aim shot, defend and heal. As for its metaphors, anti-air, it targets all enemies, it requires 50 out of 80 metaphors, and its attribute is shoot. It will inflict a random ailment on all air type metabots, so it's, it's decent. Then we have propulsion app, it targets all allies as well as the user, it requires half a metaphors gauge, and it is of the aim shot attribute. It increases proportion for all allies. And then finally we have Type Crash. It targets all enemies. It requires 70 out of 80 metaphors. Its skill is Interrupt. It deals massive damage to all enemies with the same leg type as the caster. So if you are fully prepared for a fight, most likely a story fight, it can be rather useful. But for a random fight in which you may not be prepared, it can be useless. So yeah, 
I would say maybe go for the bad metal if you're playing the meta B version. You can get Noctobat in both versions, and even though it won't deal that much damage against normal enemies, anytime you encounter any air metabot, you can pretty much annihilate it. And there are a few Noctobats as well as a few other uh, air type metabots in the next area. And then finally, we have the Kappa metal. Its attribute is anti C. It aims for aim shot parts and it has a compatibility of plus 7. As for its its value in attributes, it has mid in strike and shoot, low in defend and heal, and then zero in everything else. As for its mana forces, anti C is pretty much a the same as anti air, only it takes effect on anti C on sorry on C type metabots. Mobility up. It requires half a metaforce gauge and improves speed for all allies leg like metaparts. And then metaforce up. It makes it easier for all allies to gather metaforce. See, selecting the charge uh, option will give you a full metaforce gauge, and taking damage will fill it up by 50% instead of 25, or 20 over 80. So a decent ability. And why do I recommend this metal for the Kubagara version? Well. In the next area, though not straight away, you will eventually encounter a handful of C-type metabots. And there's a specific boss that if you come equipped with a C metabot with compatibility, it can really make it much, much more easier. So I would say for the Kubagara version, get the Kappa metal, and for the um, for the Meta B version, get either the Bat or the um, what was it? Or the Mouse. So yeah, we're going to take the bat, of course. As I said before, you will get a chance to obtain all medals, so don't worry about it. So now that we got that, let's quickly put, put it on. There we go. Nice, even plus seven. All right. So this episode has been quite a lot of talking and not much battling, really. So let's end it with one more fight. You may want to save though before you go here. Iggy, are you ready to go? Yep, what about you, Erika? I'm ready to roll! Let's get going then. Before we go, it's time for a little warm up. Alright, so from this point onward, most fights will be at least against two metabots. And we already went over Brass, so we might as well start talking about the about Erika's second metabot. But before that, some tactics. This is a fight that I would say is considerably easier on the Meta B version, even though the enemies are the same. Even in the Kuwagara version, or the Rokusho, I keep saying Kuwagara instead of Rokusho. In the Rokusho version, Erika still has the same metabots. So for this one I'm going to use Meta B's Metaforce mostly. And with Noctobat we'll just try to get some damage in. Anyways, the enemy, the new metabot, pretty prime. It is quite an interesting one. It is also a female metabot, keep that in mind. Let's go over for the head part first. Its skill is counter attack. It pretty much sets up a, an aura or a counter aura. Whenever the enemy takes the attack, it is entirely possible for it to counter, dealing a high amount of damage. And if the counter is successful, the enemy will not take the initial damage that you dished out, so be careful about that, because it is entirely possible to use a very strong attack only for you to counter it and not even deal any basic any damage at first. But yeah. Then, the, it has the stop skill in one of the arms, pretty much the same as we saw with Pepper Cat, only this time. And then it has the, a new skill, Defend, which we can see right now. So the tiny blue shield, that pretty much means that any attack that is directed towards Brass will be interrupted or intercepted by Pretty Prime, meaning that she will take the damage instead. Whenever an enemy metabot is intercepting an attack for another, since it is pretty much standing in the way, it is entirely impossible for it to avoid the attack, because if, if let's say Pretty, Pretty Prime avoided the attack, it would end up hitting Brass. However, if you happen to target a metabot that is defending, since it is not standing in the way of anything else, it is possible for it to avoid the attack. And other than that, I, I realized that I stopped talking about Pretty Prime, but there wasn't really much else to say. She is also two-legged, so... What we talked about before. If I were to recommend, I would say this. This is not like the first fight in the game. What do I mean by that? I mean that 
we can actually get a meta part once we win. And for this I would say try not to get any part from Brass, because soon enough we will be getting a full set for free, so don't worry about getting any Brass parts. Alright, let's see if we can actually destroy Pretty Prime. I don't think so, nope. So maybe we will get to see the counter. So yeah, so why do I say that this fight is a bit tougher? Well, it really comes down to Pretty Prime's counter ability. So with long range metabots, you can see if you're about to select a target that happens to be using a counter, and you can walk around that. You can either use your turn to maybe charge metaphors or try to attack someone else. Not so much with any short range metabots, since you end up attacking whatever metabot is closer to you. So it is entirely possible to accidentally hit Pretty Prime while she's in a counter stance and have your metabot absolutely destroyed. So yeah, the Ultra Shot really comes in handy for this particular fight. But as you can see, even though the enemy is not that tough, as soon as more metabots are introduced, battles really start to drag on. For now it doesn't seem like picking Noctobot was a good idea, but trust me, it will become more apparent. Hopefully now we can actually target Brass. Or I guess not. I mean not with this attack, with Meta Beast Ultra Shot. Alright, come on now. Yes. So Brass has pretty low armor values, hopefully this can take her out, please. Yes, perfect. Alright, let's see what we got. Hopefully a pretty prime part. Oh, of course, that's fine. We got some EXP and the battle metal level up, nice. Give me a break. Ah, it's you guys. Oh, it's Karin! Good afternoon, Iki and Erika. So you just ignore me now? Nice, Iki. Like you don't. What are you guys doing here? Karin likes to go outside sometimes, so I come to keep an eye on her. But I don't have to tell you guys anything. Never mind that. What are you doing here? We've come to... we come to defeat the ghost! Huh? What'd you say? I said we come to defeat the ghost in a row battle, and take back the meta parts that everyone lost. I'm gonna catch that ghost's true identity on film perfectly. Right, Iggy? Isn't it too much? In other words, are you trying to challenge me? You want a piece of me? Bring it on, Iggy! Aw oh, man, know what? Let's race to see who can find and beat the ghost first. Karen! Let's go! Sorry, Koji gets heated up about things very easily. It's not your fault, Karen. Karen, let's go! Well, let's see each other again. Karen, she's really different from, from other girls. Hey Iggy, let's go check out Odoro Pond. Why Odoro Pond? The rumor says the spirit shows up at Odoro Pond. First, we should go check out Odoro Pond and see what we can find out. Odoro Pond is to the right. Alright, let's get going. Yeah! Alright, so I think that's more than enough for now. We got a few new medals and we got our second metabot. Next time, we'll explore Odoro Pond and see if we can discover any more information regarding the ghost. See you guys!